Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Do you believe the Savior when he says these words? Do you believe it's possible? And if so, how? We have some clues. In Psalm 34, 18, it says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Again, the heart here is referenced as the key to at one minute with God. In this case, a broken heart. In Psalm 51, 17, it puts it a little differently. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. But what does this mean? How do we sacrifice a broken heart? When Moses brought the children of Israel to the tabernacle, he introduced them to a ceremony which was designed to literally bring them into the presence of the Lord, just as he and the 70 elders of Israel had experienced on Mount Sinai. The first sacrifice that he made during this tabernacle or temple ceremony was the sin sacrifice, where he takes a bull and he burns most of its inward parts on the altar. But the bullock and his hide, his flesh, and his dung, he burnt with fire without the camp, as the Lord commanded Moses. Isn't that weird to take most of the bull, including its dung, and to purposefully take that outside the wall and burn it there? Why? Well, to be renewed or born again in Christ and made worthy to stand in the presence of God, we can't have, to put it bluntly, poop in our inward parts, poop in our hearts. And by poop, I mean all those poopy little thoughts we have day in and day out about ourselves and other people. A pure heart truly is a broken heart. It's about breaking that outer shell and letting all the ick and the yuckiness ooze out so that Christ can replace it with love and pure light. Can you imagine standing in the presence of God with thoughts in your mind like, I wish I wasn't so fat, or I really hate my nose, or I feel like such a loser right now? Can you imagine kneeling at his feet, and instead of being bathed in his love and light, you're focusing on the other people and why they don't deserve to be there, or even worse, worrying about the thoughts they might be having about why you shouldn't be there? This week, I encourage you to be mindful of the thoughts that you have about yourself, especially whenever you're walking in front of a mirror or you're around that person that for some reason you always feel self-conscious around. What thoughts are coming into your mind and your heart? Acknowledge them, let them out, and replace them with love. Compliment yourself at least two or three times. I love you, Jocelyn. Say it out loud. You have great teeth. I love that your ears are perfectly shaped and I love your skin tone. Even if you don't 100% feel the things that you're saying, just have the faith to do it anyway and that faith will be rewarded with increased love for yourself. Once you get really good at that, then you can move on to other people. When you notice these negative or judgmental thoughts coming into your mind, acknowledge them without judgment for yourself. Otherwise, you have to go back to the first step. And then just flip that right away to love and gratitude. I love you. Thank you for being in my life and teaching me. And then think about, really, how can this person be a teacher in your life? How can they be a stepping stone toward you becoming even more Christ-like. And yes, I mean applying this to even the worst offenders in your life. One of the most healing things I've ever experienced is applying this principle in rooting out the hurt and the shame and the blame and the fear I had for those who had contributed to some of the worst pain and sorrow I've experienced in my life, including the loss of one of my children, my own physical disability, watching my own children suffer because of the dishonesty, the callousness and cruelty of others, even those things can be sacrificed on the altar of faith and replaced 
with charity, with truth and light, if that is truly what we desire. Brothers and sisters, God loves you, and he loves all his children, and he wants you to experience that love. The sacrifice of a broken heart is no sacrifice because he replaces it with infinite love and joy if we are willing to break open our hearts and our minds to him and are willing to see as we are seen.